This is the world's most efficient electric motor, and there are many secrets to its incredible results, hitting over 99% efficiency. Achieving this took decades of engineering expertise and development from one of the industry-leading giants, ABB. This is huge as motors are normally stuck around the 96% mark. So how did the engineers achieve this, and what can we learn from it? I'm Dr. Ryan Innes, and this is a Xerox Deep Dive. It might not seem like much, but that 3% efficiency improvement relates to millions of dollars in savings. My fascination with this machine started when I saw a press piece about it. After zooming in to an image, I saw that the nameplate of the machine was readable, so using my expertise working with electric machines, and some of ABB's available documents and booklets, I've managed to find out quite a lot about this gigantic system, which you might find interesting too. I respect your time, so let's get straight into how it works and how it's getting on in the real world. If we first look at that nameplate, we can see a lot of general information about the machine to get us started. The headline information is that it's a 56.2 megawatt brushless synchronous motor that spins up to 1000 RPM. The total weight of the motor is around 95 tons, or about the same as a single story building. I told you this thing was big. Other words on the nameplate seem more cryptic, but we'll get to some of them later. The first thing to work out is the overall design of the motor, which is thankfully written on the nameplate. Both the stator, which is the stationary part, and the rotor, the spinning part, contain copper windings. That's different from a typical permanent magnet motor, where the rotor contains rare earth magnets instead of those copper windings. One of the key challenges with this type of motor is that we need to supply power to the copper windings in the rotor to turn it into an electromagnet, otherwise the copper windings are just sat there being pretty useless. This process is called external excitation, where an external power source sends electricity to the rotor, magnetizing it. Once the rotor is magnetized, it can interact with the stator that has a rotating magnetic field which is generated by alternating current. This rotating magnetic field in the stator causes the rotor to spin in sync with it, hence the name synchronous motor. That's also why ABB's ultra-efficient motor's nameplate lists an excitation voltage and current. It's showing the power needed to excite or magnetize the rotor. But how does this power get to the rotor if it's spinning around? Because surely the wires would just get all tangled. Well, slip rings would seem like a good possible choice, as they allow a connection to be made between a rotating and stationary point. But alas, these are far too inefficient. Because the slip rings have brushes, they cause rubbing and heat loss, which would crash the overall motor efficiency. This is why the ABB system is brushless. Instead of using the brushes, it uses wireless power transfer, similar to you would use for wireless charging of a mobile phone. This eliminates the brushes, but also allows the engineers to still control the strength of the electromagnet in the rotor, which pushes the system well onto its way for efficiency records. But there are even more things going on here. These windings are not just any old windings. They are form-wound windings, which is surprisingly hard to say, and have a special type of vacuum pressure impregnation insulation. Unlike the loose, spaghetti-like random windings found in smaller motors, form-wound coils are precisely shaped loops of rectangular or flat copper conductors in a process that is extremely satisfying to watch. Each coil is custom bent to fit perfectly into the stator, which minimizes gaps and maximizes the percentage of space occupied by conductive material. That's a big deal for efficiency as it means lower resistance and therefore lower losses. These windings are also insulated with layers of insulating tape and then vacuum pressure impregnated with epoxy resin, creating a rock-solid, void-free structure that resists heat, 
vibration and moisture. There are some more fascinating reasons for this motor's high efficiency, which we'll get to after a quick message from today's sponsor, 8sleep. You've probably already heard of 8sleep by now, the company dedicated to improving your sleep. Well, they've just launched the new Pod 5, which is a smart mattress cover that goes directly onto your existing mattress. By automatically regulating your temperature at night, it helps you get up to a full hour of extra quality sleep each night, boosting your energy so you can do the things that you love. It also controls the temperature of each side independently, in case you and your partner like different temperatures. The pod cleverly regulates your body's sleep cycles, with the ability to cool down to just 55 degrees Fahrenheit, or warm up to 110, which has been great during the recent British heat waves, as we have no air conditioning. But it's not all just about temperature, as the built-in sensors monitor your sleep stages, heart rate variability, respiratory rate, and more, meaning you can track your sleep without wearing any devices. This data ties into their preventative health tracking system, which can update you on things like disrupted breathing or abnormal heartbeats. Head over to 8sleep.com slash Xeroth and use the code Xeroth to get $350 off your very own Pod5 system. You also get 30 days to try it at home and then return it if you don't like it, though I'm sure you will and your body will thank you for the investment into good sleep. Okay, back to this incredibly efficient motor and in terms of its design, it has been tuned to reduce things called harmonics. Harmonics are unwanted distortions in the electrical signals, like off-key notes mixed into a pure musical tone. In an ideal system, electricity flows as a smooth sine wave, just like a single clean piano note. But when motors, transformers, or electronics interfere, they create extra waves called harmonics. These are high frequency multiples of the main wave, which for our example is a 50 Hz wave, and it sits on top of the voltage and current, making it much less smooth. This graph shows how we start with a nice, smooth, fundamental waveform, but we also have a fifth harmonic distortion, which is caused by other components. When added together, we get a less than smooth sine wave. The result is excess heat, noise, vibration, and even damage over time. By controlling harmonics, motors can run cooler, more efficiently, and with less stress on components, ultimately improving their performance and lifespan. Removing these harmonics is no easy job, but ABB have tried their best using advanced control strategies and solid single-piece rotors. The rotors also have several solid plates attached to them, which is said to considerably reduce the harmonics too. These plates also help provide a large surface area for the machine, which helps with its cooling. This is important as a machine that's too hot is not as efficient as it could be. The cooling is also mentioned on the nameplate, but in a rather cryptic way, written as IC8A1W7. I wasn't familiar with this, but a quick Google told me it follows an industrial standard from the International Electrotechnical Commission. Each part of the code refers to something different, but what it broadly means is that the motor uses circulating air to keep itself cool, and that air is cooled down using a heat exchanger and a cold water source. This makes sense when looking at the rotor, which has integrated fan blades on it to circulate that air. This seems like a very efficient way to cool it, as it doesn't require large pumps to pump water around the machine. Everything about the motor's design is chosen to improve efficiency. Even the bearings and mounting of the rotor are optimised to make sure it doesn't vibrate more than necessary. Zooming back into that nameplate gives us a little bit more information on something different too. The duty type is labelled as S1 which refers to how the motor will be used. S1 is a type of continuous use, so the motor will be run at roughly a constant speed and load for very long periods of time. This is good for the motor's efficiency as it doesn't waste energy speeding up and slowing down, but there's actually more to this than just that. Because engineers designing the motor know exactly how it will be used, they can make sure everything comes together just right to optimize the motor's efficiency sweet spot. If you look at the efficiency plot of a motor, 
you can see how efficient it will be at different speed and torque combinations. The darkest red area is often referred to as the peak efficiency island, which is essentially our efficiency sweet spot. If the engineers know ahead of time where the machine will operate, they can make sure that that high efficiency sweet spot or island is located at that point and make sure that it operates there as efficiently as possible, even if it's detrimental to some of the other operating conditions. It's clear that no single breakthrough or innovation pushed this motor to its record-breaking efficiency, just perfect execution of tried and tested designs. So how is this motor getting on in the real world? Well, the motor is in operation at a steel plant in India, which is where it was custom designed to go. This means the operating conditions keep it very close to the peak efficiency of 99.13%. According to the press release, it is set to pay for itself through energy savings alone in just three months. I don't know if this is a typo because I ran the rough numbers and this would price the motor at just $60,000, which seems extremely cheap for something the size of a mid-sized aircraft. I wonder if they meant a three-year payback period, which would put it at $720,000. Otherwise, this steel plant has got a fantastic deal. This cost saving comes from comparing its insanely efficient motor to a standard design, apparently saving around 61 gigawatt hours of energy and $6 million over a 25-year lifespan equating to four days of peak power output from the world's largest offshore wind farm. It will also prevent 45,000 tonnes of CO2 emissions, comparable to removing 10,000 cars from the road for a year. As you're still watching, please consider subscribing. It's free and helps the channel a lot. I'm also starting a newsletter soon, so sign up if you want extra engineering content straight into your inbox when it starts. You might also like some of my other videos, like this one on the design of a new electrostatic motor. And as always, thanks for watching.